Hello, I'm Maria Ressa. Welcome to Talk Thursday. After months of negotiations, the Philippines signed a military deal with the United States that will allow American troops greater access to Philippine bases. Under this agreement, the Philippines will also be an arsenal for, will hold an arsenal for U.S. weaponry for the next 10 years. Critics, though, say the deal was rushed and that the Philippines has nothing to gain from it. It was also criticized for its lack of transparency. Joining us today is Defense Undersecretary Pio Lorenzo Batino. He's the head of the Philippine panel for the negotiations on this deal. He has the inside track. He will talk about the criticism surrounding the agreement, what exactly is the agreement about, and what, the fi what does the Philippines stand to gain from it. Pio, thank you for coming. Good morning. Good, good morning. morning. Well, After good afternoon. Yes. Uh, yeah. yes. Um, well, let me ask you again. Uh, this deal was signed. The reaction has, you heard from the senator saying mm. that it's unconstitutional, mm. that they should have been consulted. Mm. And then you had another senator, Senator Santiago, said it's unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. um, senator Tiliana said it's a security blanket. Mm. I mean, how did you react to the reactions? Well, the uh, instructions to the negotiating panel was very clear. To come up with an agreement that would further implement the Mutual Defense Treaty and the Visiting Forces Agreement. We all know that the uh, Mutual Defense Treaty, uh, the, the most significant provision of that would be that uh, both parties oblige each other to uh, defend uh, when there is an armed uh, attack on, on either. Yeah. But another significant provision of this is, would be Article 2 of the MDT, which states that uh, parties uh, are obliged to maintain and develop their individual and collective capacity for mutual defense. And in that light, uh, we mm -hmm. had joint training exercises starting 1998 mm -hmm. after the Visiting Force Agreement was okay. uh, ratified. And after 15 to 16 years of uh, uh, tra joint training exercises, uh, both parties recognize that uh, we can still elevate the defense cooperation between the Philippines and the U.S. And thus, EDCA. EDCA really uh, provides uh, two more activities for, for defense cooperation, okay. would, which would be prepositioning of U.S. equipment, mm -hmm. and second, uh, any related construction of facilities. Um, but uh, uh, I, 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 mu I must emphasize that uh, in, in the EDCA, uh, there, is, uh, a pr there are provisions that uh, would uh, strictly require the consent of the Philippine government uh, uh, for all construction and prepositioning activities. Now, prepositioning would be very, very important yeah. uh, for the AFP because uh, even as we are seriously uh, undertaking a modernization process with the, with the full support of President Aquino yep. and Congress uh, with an allocation of at least 75 billion pesos for the next five years, there is still a recognition that we are still lacking in some equipment, especially in HADR mm -hmm. uh, and maritime domain awareness and maritime security. And this is where we think, uh, wh where we believe that the prepositioning of, of equipment would be able to fill in the short-term capability gaps of the AFP, especially again on these fields of maritime security, maritime domain awareness, and uh, humanitarian assistance and disaster relief. In something like this, though, do you consider this a new treaty or an extension of the MDT and the VFA? We are just implementing a policy that had already been uh, uh, agreed upon way back in 1951. That policy which uh, calls for mutual defense between the Philippines and the U.S. through the Mutual Defense Treaty. That policy uh, was reaffirmed through the Visiting Forces Agreement. Yes. And in the Visiting Forces Agreement uh, uh, expressly allowed the temporary presence of U.S. forces primarily to enable mutual capacity building. And the first step of that was uh, the joint training exercises 
such as Balikatan and Well, we others. had Balikatan, and then we had the special forces coming in beginning mm -hmm. in 2002 mm -hmm. for counterterrorism exercises. Mm -hmm. um, and what, you know, we were just talking about this. What's interesting is in Camp Navarro, I was there when they landed, mm -hmm. and they took cargo containers, and mm -hmm. they made their, mm -hmm. their homes yes. inside Camp mm -hmm. Navarro. And the same cargo containers are still there more than a decade later. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of interesting how it's evolved. And let's look at that in the context of U.S.-Philippine relations, because mm -hmm. essentially, are you, well, President Obama said mm -hmm. this is a, a new chapter. Mm -hmm. Is this the, the Philippines and the U.S. getting over the closing of the basis deal from 1991? Because that did anger the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, and now is this really, you know, the Visiting Forces Agreement is the first step mm -hmm. that brought U.S. troops back mm -hmm. into, into the Philippines. Mm -hmm. But is this really that? Is this a new chapter in that sense? I, I my take is that this is the natural progression of the uh, defense cooperation between the Philippines and the U.S. After you know um, achieving the objectives of ha uh, of having a, a joint uh, training exercises, uh, which is achieving interoperability yep. between uh, our two forces, uh, thus enabling our operations to be as efficient as possible. Um, the next question is, what's next? We, 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 we don't need to um, just uh, satisfy ourselves with, with just that. Yes. Uh, especially that uh, the security environment is evolving, is changing, and that uh, there is a recognition that uh, we still uh, lack some uh, modern defense equipment uh, for our defense posturing. Would you say this is also one of the, this time, about two years ago, mm -hmm. when China went very aggressively, mm -hmm. became far more aggressive in mm -hmm. the region, mm -hmm. was that an impetus for the Philippines to actually want more? Um, I would uh, look at it at, uh, this way, that uh, it, it's really just uh, an idea whose time has come. Um, the, the joint training exercises could just bring us to, to a maximum level of defense cooperation. Um, with the joint training exercises, much confidence had been built mm -hmm. uh, between mm -hmm. the two militaries. And with that level of confidence, then we are uh, ready for the next uh, level. So you're a lawyer. Mm -hmm. You were the head of the, the panel that mm -hmm. really negotiated this. How confident are you that it will survive any Supreme Court case? Mm -hmm. Well, th that would be our basis. Uh, that uh, this EDCA merely implements policy that right. have already been uh, policies that have already been uh, approved by the Philippine government and even ratified uh, concurred in by the Senate in two separate instances and uh, th th this would be the mutual defense treaty and the visiting forces agreement inside the I, I guess can you tell us more about the actual the the main points of this agreement mm -hmm. that the public should know about. We, By the way, if you want to see the full document, you can see it on Rappler. Mm -hmm. Well, firstly, that uh, the access and use of by U.S. forces uh, on agreed locations would be on a rotational basis. Okay. We also so have... No basing. Yes. Right. We also have clear provision here that the, that the U.S. does not intend to establish permanent military presence or base. Um, the next uh, question would be on uh, the definition of agreed locations. Correct. The agreed locations would still have to be uh, threshed out. Uh, it's, it's not yet they're, they're not yet specified here uh, in the agreement. However, um, it's very clear that it will be provided through the AFP. And the direction of the DND is to study uh, the possibility of having several AFP bases to be the agreed locations for the implementation of uh, uh, pre-positioning and construction activities under EDCA. Mm -hmm. And may I just state, uh, now, now that we're uh, on this topic, mm -hmm. that uh, um, the, DNDs, the DND and AFP are studying only uh, several uh, AFP bases. Um, this is very important to stress because there are some statements coming out that the 
uh, uh, according to some critics, yeah. the whole Philippine territory had already been transformed into one whole U.S. facility yes, or yeah. base. And this is not true because we're just eyeing uh, several uh, AFP bases to, f to, to sufficiently implement the, uh, this program. And also, can, can I just uh, stress that the direction of the DND and AFP is to just identify a certain area of an AFP base. It will, it, it will not be the whole AFP base because we need those bases. Yes. Uh, the AFP needs their, their bases. But there are some areas that could be allocated to the, the that could be shared mm -hmm. with the U.S. forces. And this would be... Uh, so this is a little bit like Camp Navarro. Yes. This yes. is in Zamboanga City mm -hmm. where the special forces, the U.S. special forces mm -hmm. have been based. But will you allow, they will be allowed to build though. The Americans will be allowed to actually build and not just to have cargo containers as rooms. Subject, of course, to approval of the Philippine government. It would be interesting to see if Camp Navarro changes. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. <laughs> it was actually surprising to see that they were still in the same cargo containers. Mm -hmm. But I think they were, so a lot has evolved in this relationship, but you have so many different mm -hmm. I int inter vested interests in here. Um, for the Defense Department, mm -hmm. it, um, one of the key interests is to actually upgrade defense capability. Mm -hmm. Our Navy is really poor yeah. in terms of its mm -hmm. capacity and the U.S. has one of the most mm -hmm. modern, if not the mo most mm -hmm. modern fleet, mm -hmm. but yet you have domestic interests. How are you finding that balancing act? Oh, um, I I if I can just go to one possible uh, benefit for the AFP. No? Um, again, as, as, as we've mentioned, the priority project of the DND and AFP is the implementation of the AFP modernization program. And we're in the process of selecting and procuring, procuring modern defense equipment, such okay. as ships, jet fighters, and all. But all of these will be coming in two to three years from now, one to three, one to three years from now. So even while waiting for, this, uh, for the delivery of these uh, modern defense equipment, uh, if the parties will agree, yes. then, then similar modern defense equipment could be prepositioned here so that our future pilots could already train even prior to the delivery. Uh, that would uh, sufficiently uh, facilitate the capacity building of uh, the AFP officers and men. Um, secondly, uh, as, as, uh, well, we need, we need help in terms of uh, our capability gaps right now in terms of uh, disaster relief and maritime domain awareness. And uh, the, pre the timely prepositioning of equipment here, uh, of course, subject to agreement of the parties, would uh, uh, more expeditiously yes. address uh, our, our concerns. Well, there are instances of this happening already, like in, mm -hmm. in Zamboanga, for example, mm -hmm. um, both the Philippine and the U.S. military forces agree they both have to turn the key on a drone strike. Mm -hmm. For example, the first drone strike, I think, happened in 2012. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's something that you already have a process in place, but hasn't been publicized very much. Do you expect to, do, to tell people more about it? And mm -hmm. that leads us to the transparency mm -hmm. issue. Well, with respect to the JSOTOF P, um, program, it's uh, important to stress that uh, the U.S. forces are just there to give advice and... Uh, I know this drill, to train, advise, and assist. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And, and it's true, and it's true because uh, we are abiding with the uh, Supreme Court uh, directive uh, that uh, uh, U.S. cannot conduct combat operations within the Philippines. Yes, they train us, mm. yes. And that had been a great, great help for us in elevating our uh, capacity and capability in counterterrorism. Yes. And uh, much of our success there we could attribute to the 
uh, joint training exercises that we have conducted. But they've also brought in equipment like the drone, the mm -hmm. unmanned aerial mm -hmm. UAVs, and, and what I've seen, at least in the process to actually launch, even choosing the targets of the drones, it requires both Filipino and Americans to sign mm -hmm. off, yes. even the, the codes mm -hmm. to actually mm -hmm. turn it on. Mm -hmm. Those safeguards are, th are in place there. Do you plan to put the sa same safeguards I on more on the troops coming in? Yes, yes. Uh, the uh, the direction of the DND and AFP is uh, to um, take in the reins uh, as, as, as it had done so uh, in the past with respect to addressing internal security threats. Um, we are just, of course, very appreciative that there is uh, this possible assistance, at least in technical guidance and uh, training from the U.S. A little more than two years ago, uh, Foreign <coughs> Affairs Secretary um, Albert Del Rosario mm -hmm. went to the United States mm -hmm. and actually met with uh, Secretary Hillary Clinton at mm -hmm. that point and asked for the U.S. for asked for the U.S.'s help. Is this what it is? Um, Edka. Yes. Do you remember? He went. I remember mm -hmm. the, the when, you know they were sitting around the mm -hmm. table and it was when China had actually mm -hmm. um, launched more mm -hmm. aggressive moves. And there were instances where the ships came in, mm -hmm. and then the Philippines pulled out. Mm -hmm. The agreement was yes, and uh, Edgar would f uh, facilitate, as I've said, uh, addressing our capability gaps, mm -hmm. not only in terms of counterterrorism, but uh, uh, China. maritime domain awareness right. and maritime security. So what so we're saying here is the that prepositioned equipment could be used to address these concerns. And we anticipate that there would be even greater information sharing uh, between our two militaries uh, to, to help each other's uh, uh, mandate, so to speak. Um, in terms of uh, uh, the, the terms of the agreement, it mm. leaves open how many U.S. troops can mm. rotate mm. out of the Philippines. Mm. You intentionally left that blank? Um, just like the VFA, there, there is no mention of uh, U.S. troops Correct. Yes. because, it, again, this would be an operational concern that would have to be decided uh, regularly by the AFP and the U.S. Pacific Command, Correct. depending, of course, on the needs, uh, on the requirements uh, uh, based on the prevailing circumstances. And to, agree, to a degree, I can understand you cannot anticipate problems until they're actually there. Yes. What about to Bataha Reef. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, until today, the U.S. still hasn't paid the fine mm -hmm. there. Uh, th was this discussed in the negotiations? Well, uh, actually, there is uh, another track for that, uh, okay. the Department of Foreign Affairs. We are, we are not uh, actually involved with that, but uh, the, the little that I know about it is that uh, the, the U.S. Uh, is ready to pay. Okay. It's just that uh, there is a pending Supreme Court case that uh, would probably have to be decided first before any uh, final computation would be would be made. And then the last part on the deal itself is the mm -hmm. years uh, of uh, termination. Mm -hmm. uh, it, there's an auto renew clause mm -hmm. in it. Uh, will that it, it automatically renews then until one of the parties terminates? Is yes. that the way? Yes. Uh, why why did you put that there instead of having it um, actually have to be reviewed every year? For example, um, there is a provision for regular consultations between the parties okay. on the implementation of the activities so that uh, the Philippine government could uh, assess the, effect the effectiveness of this uh, agreement on its needs. Yes, but um, it's a long time. Ten years yes. is a long time. Well, it's, it's, I think we're able to negotiate uh, something significantly shorter. No? Okay. Um, and and uh, if, if you will see the other access agreements of the U.S., it would it's be on a longer, longer basis. Longer term basis, yes. yeah. Because on their end, the money is that they have to shift so many things mm -hmm. and it has to be mm -hmm. worth their while. The, the question is, having the equipment here, weapons or any type of, of military equipment, can also make the Philippines a target. Mm -hmm. You've heard this. E yes. Um, however, uh, we, we, we have... Uh, um, that, that's why we clearly defined here in the agreement that uh, the, the main or the, the exclusive purpose of this uh, agreement is for the maintenance and development of our individual and collective capacity that it is not intended for any 
uh, military operation outside of this purpose. Okay, interesting. I'm sure it is no coincidence that the two years <coughs> or eight months, the eight months of formal negotiations and two years of informal talks, mm. uh, it's no coincidence that this happened at a time when China's become mm -hmm. more aggressive mm -hmm. in Asia, mm -hmm. both uh, in Japan, uh, in the Senkaku Islands, and then in the South China Sea. Um, with that as a backdrop, you know how much of it is, uh, how much of of that spirit was there in the talks? Both nations have to deal with a more aggressive mm -hmm. China. Uh, with or without uh, that backdrop. Uh, uh, there, there definitely is a recognition that uh, we, we lack uh, capability in maritime domain awareness. And it's not just the West Philippine Sea. Yes. Unfortunately, um, most of our fronts are, you know, where we're blind on, on uh, some of our fronts. So um, in recognizing this uh, um, lack of capacity, there is a need to fill in uh, these uh, mm. defense capabilities. So former Senator René Sagisaga, I spoke with him a mm. little bit earlier, mm. and he said that in essence he agreed with the spirit of mm. it, but that he had wanted more transparency. Mm -hmm. He had wished that the, that the panel had taken the, defen the <coughs> senators along. Mm. Why not take them along with you? Well, Why? Um, I, I would like to ch also refer to the statement of Senator Trillanes yes. that uh, we actually had uh, an executive session, with a hearing uh, with the Committee on Defense even before the negotiations started. So did you expect Senator Trillanes' committee to tell the rest of the senators? Or unlike 1991, for example, mm. when Senator, uh, <coughs> when Manglapus, the DFA secretary then, actually would brief the senators. Um, in this one, you only briefed the defense committee. Is that, was yeah. that a mistake? No, um, actually the Defense Committee would comprise probably, if, if, if I'm not mistaken, 20 or so senators mm. already. And uh, okay. fr from my uh, information, um, invitations were sent. So but aside from that, uh, after each round, yes. as much as we could, uh, uh, let's say, uh, present as much information as we could present, yes. we would be giving out reports to the key committees. Did Senator Santiago see it? She was very vocal. Mm -hmm. uh, we had submitted reports you did? Uh, to okay. the uh, Committee on Foreign Affairs, Committee on Defense, and the uh, Senate leadership, as well as the counterpart committees and positions in the House of Representatives. Okay, let me ask you, why was this so um, sensitive to Filipinos when if you look at the polls, both mm. the Pew Global mm. Attitude Survey that mm. showed Filipinos actually like Americans mm. more than Americans mm. like themselves, mm. and the Social Weather Station Survey that showed 88% of Filipinos like them, trust mm. Americans. Yes, yes. Despite that, why is this such a sensitive issue for the Philippines? Well, uh, there would always be some dissenters. Yeah. Uh, we... we uh, have anticipated that uh, we cannot, uh, of course, I think, please everyone in, in any in any undertaking. Uh, but uh, uh, we agree that uh, our sense is that uh, the Filipino public is behind uh, even increasing behind the concept of EDCA, which is increasing our defense cooperation with our only treaty ally, the U.S. Yes. I think it had also helped a lot yes. that uh, our joint training exercises in 15 to 16 years uh, would have already shaped uh, opinion in favor of even greater RP and, U uh, RP and U.S. cooperation in the field of defense. The United States is very careful about the images it sends out. Mm. And what was interesting, it's during President Obama's <coughs> visit, he was in his sh rolled up s white shirt mm. uh, in front of American and Filipino soldiers in uniform mm. behind mm. him, mm. talking about the U.S.'s, in his words, ironclad support mm. of the Philippines. Mm. That is a very strong message mm -hmm. to send to, to China or to any other potential aggressor. Was that something that, was that what the message that you wanted to push out? Well, that was, uh, we didn't have 
anything to do with the no, planning I know, for that. No, I know but, that, Pio, but uh, is that the message that we're sending out with this deal? What what we know is that uh, there are, uh, of course, there there are several or there are some American uh, personnel now because Balikatan is about to be implemented. Correct. So thus, the availability of uh, American soldiers being in the audience as well as, of course, we have Juice Mug. Yes. Okay. Um, but it was a very strong message. Uh, and of course, we favored that message. And both presidents, interestingly, the first day, it was a little more tepid. But mm -hmm. by the second day, both presidents, um, he had a very strong, you know, mm -hmm. no ally will stand alone. Mm -hmm. And it was clear, that, and that is, that image is, sends a th says, says a thousand yes. words. Let me just give you the closing words. I mean, uh, you've gone through a long process. Mm -hmm. You've headed this. Um, mm -hmm last moments I mean what were the toughest moments that you remember while negotiating this deal um, uh, we were asked that uh, this morning and uh, uh, I must say that uh, the atmosphere during the negotiations were very cordial um, it was uh, a negotiation between equals uh, however there were tough uh, situations there were like? uh, sensitive issues like probably language languaging that that needed to be worked out um, for us it was very important to be very clear that there is there would be language that would provide that uh, philippine consent yes. is needed even after the signing of edca number one for the agreed locations number two for any construction activity and number three for pre-positioning activities and the inclusion of uh, the phrase uh, that refers to the Mutual Defense Board and the Security Engagement Board, which is the existing consultative and consenting mechanisms, would just manifest uh, clearly that the AFP yes. and the Philippine government would have a last say before any uh, activities would be implemented. So that is also why the, the Secretary of Defense was the one who signed the yes. this agreement mm -hmm. um, because it is within his rights heading the defense establishment mm -hmm. okay your last question is your worst case scenario if something happens that stops this at mm -hmm. the Supreme Court what mm -hmm. happens um, but even even while we were negotiating we knew yep. uh, from statements of uh, stakeholders that uh, there will be a legal challenge yeah. uh, in the Supreme Court um, and that the information even propelled us to do even you know better during the negotiations to make this uh, even a tighter uh, agreement uh, that would be compliant with Philippine Constitution and Philippine laws Philippine jurisprudence mm -hmm. and uh, uh, implementing what uh, are already uh, established agreements between the Philippines and the US okay mm -hmm. thank you so much uh, we've been talking to Defense Undersecretary Pio Lorenzo Batino about what the Philippines stands to gain from its 10-year military deal with the United States. It is, in the words of President Obama, a new chapter in the relationship between the two countries. Thank you so much for Thank joining you. us. Thank you. I'm Maria Ressa. Thank mm -hmm. you for joining us.